Yeah, I guess it's not possible to create, but anyway, I, I, I share with you in uh, LinkedIn. I don't know if you can. Okay, okay. Probably add it. I'll add it quickly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll start. Yes. Hello all and good evening. Welcome back to another activity by Basra University for Oil and Gas SPE student chapter. I am Hussein Basil, Oil and Gas Engineering, uh, fourth stage, and I'm the president of BOG SPE chapter. Uh, this lecture will be titled Casing While Drilling Applications, and it is a special one because we will have a special guest in this lecture, the Engineer Rodrigo Varela, Senior Well Engineer at SLB. Thank you, Engineer Varela, for accepting the invitation. And I'll read some of his experience. He was a senior, and he is a senior drilling engineer with 16 years of global experience in drilling completion engineering. With experience in countries like Chile, Russian Federation, Oman, and Saudi Arabia. Rodrigo is a tr true industry expert. He published six papers in the prestigious Society of Petroleum Engineers and currently leading a team of five drilling engineers at SLB. He specializes in planning and executing horizontal and multilateral wells in Saudi Arabia. Please, uh, I, I'd like to draw your attention to drop any question you want in the chat box or by using the raise hand button at the end of the session. And please note that the attendance registration form will be sent at the end of the session tonight. And keep your mind with us and listen carefully. And thank you all for attendance and thank you for your time. And please let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Varela for again, accepting the invitation and presenting this session. So thank you, Mr. Varela and the mic is yours. Thank you, Hussein. Can you all uh, hear me well? I will start sharing my screen. Yes, the voice voice is clear. Okay. So can you all now see my screen, right? All clear. Okay. Wait one second. All right. So thank you, Hussein, for this uh, nice introduction. So today I will talk about casing while drilling and the applications. So some of the experience that we have here in, in KSA. So first of all, uh, good evening, everybody. So we will start first with the contents. So first I will talk about me, then I will go briefly through a safety moment. We will see an overview of uh, casing drilling. Then uh, a plastering effect, which is uh, something quite important in, in casing drilling. Some of the tools that we use for casing drilling. And lastly, reference, and, and we can finish with the Q&A. So if you have any question, just please uh, write it in the chat box, or at the end, you can raise your hand and do it uh, uh, by unmute yourself. So as uh, Hussein already mentioned, so I'm uh, actually from Chile. I have uh, 16 years uh, of experience already working in, in different countries. So I started in Chile, then I moved to Oman. I work in Russia, then Mexico, and lately since 2018 in, uh, in Saudi Arabia. So I, I've written uh, six papers. Now I have another one that I will present uh, in Adipec uh, next month. So this is quick uh, about me. Then I will start with a safety moment. Why? Uh, safety is quite important in, in our industry. 
So what, what you see here is uh, related to road safety. And uh, what is wrong in all of these pictures? So it's like, if you are not focused on driving, so it's uh, very possible that you will crash. Uh, what I see here, at least in, in KSA, so it's very common that you are driving through the highway. Uh, you can drive fast above 100 kilometers per hour in the highway. And then many people is texting. So what always happen is somehow the car ahead of you stop. And then as you are, uh, let's say, replying to messages and uh, you are distracted at that moment, so you are not uh, aware and then people crash. So that's very common and probably is very common everywhere. So just uh, a little bit of uh, safety. Try to be aware that don't put makeup or eat in the car or take your eyes uh, out, of, out of the road because this will create uh, accidents. Okay, so let's, let's move now to casing while drilling. So basically what, what is uh, casing drilling? So case, casing drilling is uh, uh, basically a rotary drilling process. Uh, this rotary drilling process use the casing as a drill string. We usually in conventional drilling, so we first run a BHA uh, with drill pipe, and then uh, we drill a, a section. In, in this case, what we are going to do, we are going to have, you can see on the right side of the screen. So this is a casing bit, and this is actually the casing. And above you have your top drive and your casing running tool. So you will use the same casing as a drill string. And while you are drilling or making the hole, so you are actually running the casing. So, and the casing provides the hydraulic energy because you are circulating fluid inside the casing and then it's going out through the jets of, uh, or the nozzle of the bit. And this will, uh, let's say, move the coatings away of the bit and transport it up to the surface. So this is in basic terms, what is, uh, what, what is casing drilling? Now, there are three different types of casing while drilling technology. So we have level one. This is casing while drilling level one. The most typical that all operators use, which is their hole is already drilled. So you have an already drilled hole. Might be vertical or might be tangential or even directional. And then you just run the casing with a casing bit or a rimmer shoe. And, and in this case, this is whenever you have some tight spot or some problems to run the casing. So that's why you prefer, or we use casing rimming to be able to reach TD without, or section uh, total depth without any problem. Then we have the level two casing while drilling. So this casing while drilling has, uh, is non-retrievable casing drilling, difference to the level three because in the level three, we have a retrievable VHA. So in this case, this is the most common and the most used uh, uh, worldwide. So we have the casing and we have a casing bit and we rotate the casing with a CRT that is connected to the top, top drive on surface. As well, we can do a liner while drilling. So we have the liner, the liner is connected to the uh, drill pipe stands to surface. And then we provide rotation to the normal top drive in this case, and it's connected to a casing bit uh, on bottom. So level three, level three is a little bit more complex. In the level three, what we have, we have an actual BHA, but this BHA is retrieved at the end. So we have a normal drill bit, and then we have directional tools, and we even have an under rimmer because these tools, should go inside the casing. That's why the diameter is uh, reduced, is less than the diameter, or the ID of the casing. And then we have an under rimmer that will enlarge the hole to be able to run the casing at the same time. So 
As we have directional tools, in this case, we can drill a directional well without problems. And then at the end of the section, when we reach the uh, total depth, then we retrieve this BHA to the surface and we perform the cementing job. So moving to the, when to use the casing while drilling technology. Casing drilling is a very good technology to address some problems in the hole, such as sloughing shells. Uh, most of the times you might have some reactive shells that uh, slough, and that's why it is causing hole instability, or you may have some reactive shells. Uh, it might be tight holes, some breach, uh, might be well kick or influx and loss of circulations. Basically in KSA, we run casing drilling in the uh, 12 and a quarter section or 12 inch section. We drill 12 inch section with that nine and five eight uh, casing. Uh, we have a combination of reactive shales and as well total losses. So that's why 12 and a quarter sections in, in KSA in Saudi, we drill it with casing while drilling to avoid this problem of our reactive shells plus the loss of circulation. An additional uh, advantage is that improves the hole cleaning. And this is because you have a lot larger diameter, but as well, you have a big uh, OD casing. Therefore, your clearance between the casing outside diameter and the diameter of the hole is very small. So that's why it's uh, you have high fluid velocities in the annulus and you can clean the well fast. Another advantage is uh, reduce the wellbore damage while dealing through some deplete sands. And this is because the cuttings generated with the uh, process of the casing drilling are being smashed through to the formation. That's why the filter cake that is generated by casing drilling, it's uh, much better than a normal conventional drilling. So when you have a better filter cake, then therefore you have less mud invasion and less uh, wellbore damage. And the last advantage is that reduce the stock pipe or the stock casing and improving the ability to reach to the plant depth or section TD. So this is a, a, an ex excellent example of uh, where we use casing drilling. For instance, we have offset well number one, number two, number three, and then one well that we drill with casing drilling. So in this example, we have a previous casing of a 9958 set here. And then we have to drill through this formation that have losses. So these are intervals of total losses. So as you can see in this offset well one, we drill up to this section using two sections, one seven inch casing and then one five and a half inch casing and drilling the last part with a three and a half casing. Same for uh, offset well number two. So we have, these are low circulation zones. That's why we are, let's say, uh, spotting or pumping cement plugs to avoid drilling blind without returns on surface. So the same, two sections are needed to get to the reservoir section, two intermediate section. For the offset well number three is the same. So we are drilling and as we have losses and most possible some reactive shales, then we have hole instability. That's why a fish was left in the hole. And then we have to sidetrack the well to be able to drill. So all of those problems, losses, hole instability, stock pipes, can be solved with casing drilling. So then this is the uh, last well where casing drilling was applied. And as you can see, so you can drill the complete se section combining a lot of formation with possible loss circulation intervals and as well some uh, instability or sloughing shells without uh, any problem. So casing drilling is one of the solutions to avoid these uh, issues while, while drilling uh, a particularly in, instable section. So what are the advantage of casing drilling? We have two 
part of the advantages. One is primary, that it's a, it gives an improved ROP. Whenever the formation is uh, soft, you can have an improved ROP and a superior hole cleaning. That's why, as I explained uh, previously, you have a reduced annular clearance between the casing and, uh, and the formation. Therefore, the velocity of the fluid is higher and you can clean the well faster. That's why you can drill faster without getting a stock with a pack off or a problem of hole cleaning. So it's uh, better to deal with low circulation intervals. And most of the time, the losses are reduced. And this is because a particular effect, that is the plastering effect, it means that the coatings generated by the casing drilling are being smashed to the formation. And that's why a filter, an improved filter cake is around the borehole and therefore low circulation are cured. And most of the time in, in KSA, we have uh, this effect. So because of we drill uh, uh, total uh, low circulation zones when we drill through Shuaiba, a particular formation that is in Iraq as well. Then uh, when we drill with casing drilling, so losses start reduced and at the end disappear. As well improves borehole quality, as I mentioned. So the plastering effect is creating a better a filter cake and this filter cake will, let's say, reduce the instability and the hole will not collapse. So the better the filter cake, the less the chances for the hole to collapse. And as I mentioned previously, so there is chances to eliminate a, a case in a string. So instead of drilling one section in two runs, so we can do only one run and drill to the final TD. Then there are some secondary advantages. So the first one is time saving. Whenever you drill with the same ROP of conventional drilling or a rate of penetration, then there is a time save because with conventional drill, you need to trip in and then trip out the conventional BHA. But in this case, you are drilling and at the same time, you are running the casing. So that's why there is a time saving there. Well control. As uh, filter cake is improved and the clearance is quite small, so it's very easy to determine if we have an influx and, and, and to see in case that we have a well control uh, event. As well, improve personal safety. Most of the time we have an, on the rig floor only the personnel required to do the casing drilling, which is uh, the companies that are performing these casing uh, running services and reduce uh, rig requirements. This rig requirement is mostly because of uh, hydraulic requirement. So the mud pumps are working at less flow rates and that's why the, let's say, the power requirement for the mud pumps are, are less compared to a conventional drilling. So just to continue, wells that cannot be drilled with casing drilling. Uh, extended rich wells, so as the section is quite extended and quite long, then the casing will have a high uh, area in contact with the wellbore. In those cases, the dock might be too high and that's why we cannot uh, implement casing drilling. In cases that we require to build inclination quite high, because if the casing is big, then it's stiffer. So it's uh, difficult to build rate. And this might be only for applicable for uh, uh, casing uh, while drilling level three. So in those cases that we need to have a high build rate, let's say build above 10 degrees uh, per hundred feet or even more, then uh, casing drilling might not be the best option to, you, to implement. Another uh, a option that we cannot run casing drilling is when the annulus is too small. Therefore, the ECD might be too high. So sometimes we have wells with a lot of casing string and probably some on the rim sections. So in those cases that the annulus is very small, so most probably the friction will be high and therefore we cannot uh, implement casing drilling. Additionally, in cases that the rock or the formation is too hard, then in those cases, we cannot implement casing drilling as well. Uh, 
And this is because if you are implementing casing drilling, your casing bit should be a light bit because it needs to be drilled out later with another BHA. So that's why if the rock is too hard and this casing bit sometimes doesn't have the same durability compared to a conventional drill bit. So probably in those cases, casing drilling is not the best application. And there are cases that maybe we don't have the, the casing drilling equipment for that size. Uh, for instance, diameters bigger than 1858 CRT is not available, the casing running tool. So we do casing drilling from 1858 casing down there, can be 1338, 9958, or seven inch uh, liners. So those are the most common uh, sizes of casing drilling. Okay, and then I will move on to the next slide, which is uh, the plastering effect. So we'll talk about the plastering effect and what I mentioned previously. So as the casing is rotating through the inside the wellbore, then it's strengthening the wellbore. So, and there is a consensus in all the oil and gas industry that uh, the casing drilling is smashing the coatings through the wellbore uh, wall. So the contact of the casing, the casing has a big area because of the OD with the wellbore wall. So, and this imparts this mechanical force. So plastering the coating into the, into the fractures and the porosity of the formation. So then these fractures are packed with solids and then uh, it prevents growing of the fracture. So that's why casing drilling is uh, one implementation for uh, loss circulation because reduce the, the losses while drilling with casing. Then uh, the effective stress around the wellbore is increased, making the well stronger. And this is because of this plastering effect and the improved filter cake. And this results in a reduced fluid invasion. So if you have a good filter cake, then the less mud that is invaded into the formation and therefore the less the formation damage and then a stronger rock. Okay, let's move to the next slide. Then the reduced uh, loss circulation, so is basically a consequence of this plastering effect. Because of this continuous uh, troweling or smashing of the wellbore on wall by the couplings, so then the losses are reduced even with higher ECD as we are, let's say, smashing these cuttings through the wellbore wall. And the filter cake is mechanically packed so it's pushed into the wall and uh, it's not a scrape off by tripping because we are not tripping out. So we are just running in. So the coatings are fine because are ground as they are smashed with the casing and they are smeared or smashed into the wall and therefore strengthening the wall. So next I will try to play a video. Let me see. If it if it goes, give me just one one second. I will try to play the video.
Let me know, let me know guys if In a permeable you, you can hear. Can you hear the video? The casing coupling is forced against the borehole wall. Yes, yes, we can hear. Yeah, you can hear? Okay, perfect. Yes. I will start it from, from the beginning. So this video is just to show you the plastering effect and this uh, borehole strengthening that I, that I was mentioned at the beginning. In a permeable or porous formation, the casing coupling is forced against the borehole wall as it advances into the borehole. So what you see here, just to explain you, this is the conventional drilling. This is drill pipe as, and, and uh, drill pipe, let's say the annulus between the OD of the drill pipe with the uh, diameter of the hole is quite big compared with casing drilling. So casing drilling is a small clearance compared with conventional drilling. And that's why this coupling, the coupling of the con casing connection, so is smashing the cuttings through the walls and then it's making this plastering effect. Cuttings are ground up by the coupling and indications show less and smaller cuttings returning to surface. as mud bleeds into the formation. So you see, this is uh, the conventional drilling as the filter cake is not so good compared to casing drilling, you have more mud invasion and therefore more formation damage compared to casing drilling. Filter cake builds up with the filter cake and cuttings being plastered against the borehole wall by the casing coupling. So this is uh, what I was mentioning about the plastering effect. So casing coupling is smashing or smearing the cuttings with the wellbore wall and therefore creating a very good uh, filter cake. In casing drilling, this wall cake is not being scraped off by bit and stabilizer passage or tool joint impacts. So what, what it's saying this, usually the BHA has a stabilizer and the bit and after you finish drilling to section TD, you have to pull out of the hole. In this case, the casing is just running in. So you are not removing this filter cake as in this case that you might have a stabilizer that are engaged of the same uh, hole diameter and it might remove the, the filter cake. The benefits of casing drilling are the ability to significantly reduce and are entirely stop loss circulation while increasing borehole stability through borehole strengthening, even with higher ECDs. Okay, so. I think that now. Uh, okay. I see that now Hussein uh, put the pool. So maybe after this video. Uh, do you want me to stop it? Uh, I, I will, uh, let's I say. I can relaunch it uh, again. Yeah, yeah, you can relaunch it. Okay. Is it over? Is it ended? Uh, let me see. Okay, so what I want to do, I have some pools uh, for you guys. And uh, maybe I will do it at the end because all the all the questions are here. Let's let's do it at the, at the end. Uh, I'll relaunch it at the end. Yeah. Uh, that's fine, yeah. Let, let me just... Uh, stop okay let's uh, let's continue then this is an uh, hydraulic comparison between a uh, casing drilling this is a seven inch casing with conventional drilling so most probably this is an eight and a half hole and in this case the same so an eight and a half bit with drill collars and five inch uh, drill pipe so in red this is 
what you will see in in comparison in hydraulics so with 450 gallons per minute of flow rate as you have a very big area inside the casing so the losses the pressure losses are quite low that's why it's almost vertical the line that is going uh, of pressure losses inside the casing then this is the horizontal line is the pressure losses through the nozzles of the casing bit and then as you have a very small clearance between the casing and the annulus and therefore a high velocity you will see a a big slope so that means that a pressure loss is quite big in the annulus and then at surface so you get pressure zero in the annulus because the annulus is open to the atmosphere so this is your pump pressure in case in drilling you start with the pump pressure which is 1438 psi pressure losses inside the casing are minimal so it's not much the pressure losses that are reduced then you have the pressure loss in the nozzle of the bit and then the pressure losses in the annulus the blue line is conventional drilling so as you can see in conventional drilling pump pressure is higher compared to casing drilling at the same flow rate so 2181 psi and as you can see because of the id of the drill pipe and the drill collars are uh, let's say much smaller compared to the casing ID, then there is a big uh, pressure drop inside the drill string. So usually this is drill pipe. And then as your drill collars have even a smaller ID, so the pressure drop is even higher, as you can see the uh, high slope of the line. And then you have the same pressure losses through the bit, which is this horizontal line. And then as the annular clearance is quite big compared with casing drilling, you can see that the annular losses, it's not much compared to casing drilling that is quite high. So therefore the ECD or the equivalent circulating density with casing drilling is higher than the ECD or the equivalent circulating density with conventional drilling. So in this case it's 12 PPG with conventional drilling uh, whereas with casing drilling is 13.5. So now we will move to see some tools that we use for doing casing drilling. So first we will start with the casing bit and some uh, river shoes. On the left, you will see a casing bit. This casing bit is used for level two, which is we have this casing bit connected to the casing, and then we are making hole with this casing bit. For SLB, this is called direct XCD bit. Then on, uh, on the right side of this uh, dashed line, you will see the different rimmer shoe. So this is a rimmer shoe from uh, SLB, which is called uh, XCDR is a casing rimmer, rimmer shoe. Actually, those shoes always have only potters or, or carbon tungsten on, uh, on the side. So this is a Baker uh, easy rim shoe. As you can see, it's a kind of, uh, in this case, if both the Baker and SLB has a kind of flat uh, nose. And then this is the weather for rimmer shoe as well, only have kind of a tungsten carbide insert here on the sides just to be able to patch to pass some uh, tight spot or something like this in the case of top cop what you can see is an exact eccentric nose you might have a ledge you might have something obstructing and then if you rotate so probably as this nose is eccentric it might find the hole and it will be easy to run and as you can see, this stabilizer as well, which is a stabilizer that it has some uh, tungsten carbide, which is harder and, and it will help to continue running in hole. So the same thing with this uh, kind of, this is a kind of float shoe with some uh, tungsten carbide in, on the side. Just all of these rimmer shoe are not able to drill because if you see, they don't have cutters. 
they, this shoe, the, the one that SLB use has some cutters on, on the side, but the bit has cutter. So the bit will drill as normal, like a drilling bit. But you need to consider that this bit is a little bit lighter because this bit needs to be drilled out later for the next section. So moving on to some uh, surface equipment. So we have the casing running tool or CRT. So the CRT is very easy to rig up. It's uh, quickly to be rig up. And it's like uh, making up a drill pipe connection through the, um, through the top drive. So there is no hydraulic connection means, so there, there is no fluid means because everything is a, a mechanic in this case. Reduce the monk power and the equipment requirements, except that we need to have the power tongue, the spider, the spider to be able to hold the casing and the circulating tool. And it's easy to operate because it's easy to understand. So it, it, this part, this bottom part, it's going inside the casing. So, and this has some slips that is creating the torque to be able to make up the connection. And as well, it's ha it has a kind of packer here that it inflates and then you are able to circulate. So you can fill, fill with mud inside the casing, circulate, rotate or reciprocate. Uh, the torque capacities are quite high. And as I mentioned previously, so sizes are from five and a half to maximum 18.58 and load capacity, so this is important. That's why in some uh, extended reach wells, so it's probably not possible to use because the maximum is uh, 660 tons. So it's important to know the length of the casing string to be able to calculate is if the CRT will be um, good enough to carry this load. Now, moving to the surface equipment, if uh, some of you have visited a uh, rig, then uh, you will see the top drive. So the top drive is basically just an electric motor that is providing rotation to the string. So instead of having connected the drill pipe, you will have connected the CRT and then the CRT will, have, will connect or will go inside the casing and will be able to rotate, to fill, to circulate. Sometimes we use a cementing swivel. So this is an optional tool that this cementing swivel uh, will be able to perform the cementing job. When, uh, when you run casing drilling, you drill to section TD, then instead of uh, laying down the CRT and then connecting the cementing head, so you can just directly perform the cementing job through the cementing swivel. So that's why it's uh, an optional uh, feature. Now I will explain some uh, connections that we use for uh, casing drilling. Usually here in KSA, we use buttress connection. So buttress is typical BTC. And uh, we use some uh, MLT rings. Those as the BTC connection is inside the coupling. So the MLT ring is actually a kind of stopper. So if the connection gets over torque, then this will stop the connection of going uh, further inside. So that's why it will increase the torque capability. Those uh, MLT rings are easily installed in the box connection of the casing. So, and then this MLT ring is very useful to increase the torque capabilities of casing while drilling. It's worth to mention that Botres or BTC is an API connection. So it's very common to see this API connection as uh, it's not proprietary from uh, a company. As well, sometimes we see some LTC. This is long run thread, but LTC connection cannot be rotated. So those connections cannot be used. Only BTC connection from API can be rotated. So moving to the connection for uh, casing drilling. In this uh, slide, you will see metal to metal seals with the uh, coupling. So in this case, if you see the, the, the thread, the thread is going to a metal to metal seal. This is a band top connection from Valurec, or as well, you will see Teneris connection. Teneris connection as well has metal to metal seal. So therefore in this metal to metal seal, 
the torque capability will be higher as this is stopping the connection itself to being torque more or make up more inside. So instead of having the ring like in the previous uh, butters connections, so you have a shoulder that it will give support to the connection to be able to transmit more torque. So if you transmit more torque, this connection will not go further because it has this uh, shoulder here. Okay, so moving now to centralization as uh, casing drilling. So it's, it's uh, rotating inside the hole. So normal uh, bow spring centralizer cannot be used. So that's why we need to use this type of integral stabilizer or centralizer that are uh, rotating. So you can rotate. Uh, these ones are sometimes uh, let's say we have CRVs that some, some centralizers that it's a resin, that it's a, a glue in the surface of the casing. So this is rotating with, with the casing. These are solid centralizers. Solid centralizers uh, are not rotating because they are uh, in, inside the casing, but they, they are not rotating. So you have some stock color above and below. This can be metal or this thermoplastic. So this uh, solid centralizer will withstand the loads of casing drillings. So as I mentioned then, this uh, cent type of uh, centralizer that are bow spring or rigid, rigid centralizers cannot be used for casing drilling as those centralizer might be damaged during the casing drilling process. Okay, so what I will do, I will launch a, a poll. So can, can you see the poll now, guys, in uh, your screen? I think, yes, it's appearing on my screen. Okay, very good. So this is just uh, to know you a little bit more. So first uh, uh, question is, uh, which career in the oil and gas industry would you like to follow or pursue? Reservoir, drilling, completion, production engineering, or other. So please uh, help me to answer. This is the question uh, number one. Then uh, second question is uh, so which level runs the casing with a casing bit? Level one, level two, or level three? So I mentioned this at the beginning of the presentation. Then when to use casing while drilling? Low circulation interval, section with hole instability, extended ridge wells, or to drill hard formation? Question number four, what is the consequence of the plastering effect? Mud losses are increased, reduce mud losses or reduce hole instability. Then last uh, question number five, which method will have higher ECD? So conventional drilling or casing drilling? Then question six, can an APA connection be used for uh, casing while drilling? Yes or no? And lastly, type of centralizer that can be used. Can I use bow spring centralizer, rigid centralizer, solid centralizer? And at the end, just to evaluate the webinar. So how did you find it? Excellent, good, difficult to understand or not interesting. So I will appreciate if you guys can uh, answer the pool. So I will give you a couple of minutes for you to answer.
So are you guys uh, answering the poll? Yeah, I think they are answering, but they uh, must submit all the all their answers to the, yeah. all the questions. Yeah, I know. They, that's why I'm trying to wait a few minutes for everyone to uh, to reply. Okay, we can uh, wait one more minute. Okay. I'll and wait. we will end the poll. Yeah, now more people is participating, uh, 45%. All right, I think I will uh, end the pool. So it's very good to see that many of you, 65% wants to become a drilling engineer. So this is uh, good to see and production engineering is as well a, a very good career. It's interesting to see that nobody wants to follow a reservoir engineer path. For uh, the uh, question that which level of uh, casing while drilling runs a casing bit, so is the level two. Remember that case level one is casing rimming, so therefore we run a rimmer shoe. For level three, we have a BHA inside the casing and then we drill uh, the formation. So when to use the casing while drilling? It's for low circulation intervals sectioned with a uh, hole instability. So most of us uh, uh, answer correctly, but those two casing drilling is not for extended ridge uh, wells because extended ridge you will have a very long section and therefore high friction. That's why it's not uh, a recommended case in drilling for extended reach or for hard formations. So as I mentioned at the beginning, your casing bit is uh, quite light to be able to drill later the casing bit. So that's why it's not recommended for hard formation. So consequences of the plastic in effect. So as I mentioned, the the casing and the casing coupling is smashing the cuttings with the wellbore. So that what we'll do, we'll reduce the mud losses, not increase it. And we'll reduce hole instability. So most of the people reply uh, answer correctly. Then 
which method will have a higher equivalent circulating density? So as I mentioned, is case in drilling. So I'm glad to see that many of you uh, answer correctly that case in drilling because of the small clearance between the casing diameter, the outside diameter and the diameter of the hole, then as this is a small, the ECD is quite higher. Can any API connection be used to perform casing while drilling? The answer is not any, only the VTC one, because if we have LTC connection, the long round thread, that cannot be used. So type of centralizer, this is the last slide that I, I was sharing. So both spring centralizer are the one that uh, are compressed when running in the hole. Those one cannot be used because those are very easy to get damaged. So we don't use bow spring centralizer. Rigid centralizer as well cannot be used and only solid centralizer as you see here in the image. This solid metal centralizer or can be a kind of uh, aluminum alloy. And this is a thermoplastic centralizer. And this as well, centralizers that are installed in the, in the casing it's, uh, itself. Okay, how did you find this webinar? Okay, I'm glad to see that many of you find it good and some of you difficult to understand. So thank you for, for answering the, the pool. Now, some uh, references. Uh, you can uh, either uh, um, write the link or you can uh, just uh, take a picture of the QR code and then uh, you will be directed to the link. So this is the, the first link is the, the SLV webpage of case in drilling. So you will see there what are the services that we have, what are the tools that we use and some explanations. The second uh, link, it's a link uh, to Science Direct, which it's explained case in drilling in a general way. So you can go to this website and then uh, investigate and read further. One website that I like a lot is uh, PetroWiki from SPE. In there, you can get a lot of uh, insights and information, not only for casing drilling, but many other things, rig types, uh, formation evaluation, logging, etc. So it's a very good uh, website and it's uh, inside SPE and it's free and you can get a lot of information. And the last uh, link is for all of you is the career site of uh, SLV. So I will encourage you all to go there, check the careers website and uh, internships. So most of you, maybe you are in the, your uh, last semester. And uh, so here you can see some opportunities to get internships inside SLV. So we have quite a lot of activity in, uh, in Iraq right now and, and in all Middle East basically. So activities picking up. Now the oil industry is a industry that is growing because we have, let's say energy needs. So the world needs energy and needs this energy to be affordable and sustainable. So that's why I will encourage you all of you to check this webpage and see internships. So internships is your early careers is where you enter to any company. And you can check uh, other websites as well for Halliburton, Baker Hughes, and even uh, operator companies. Operator companies, usually they don't hire much of uh, early personnel. Usually they hire people with experience, but Anyway, probably in, uh, in your country, you can apply to operators directly in, uh, in Iraq. So that is from my side. I would like to thank you all for your attention, for answering the pool. And now I'm uh, open to any questions that you have. So you can do 
maybe write it in the chat box or raise your hand and then you can unmute yourself and do the question. Thank you, Mr. Varela. Uh, okay, we are now open to any question. Uh, you can unmute yourself directly and ask your question. Okay, there is one question from uh, Tommy. If there, if there are defects in the casing thread or oxidation and corrosion in the casing, can it be the steel used for casing drill? A uh, very good question, Tommy. Uh, no, if the if the connection is damaged or corroded, or it has some pitting, so we cannot use that connection. What we usually do. In uh, reality, we inspect the connection. So an inspector comes to the location, he clean the connection, and he do uh, MPI, which is magnetic particle inspection. So he puts some uh, particles with magnetism and with the uh, ultraviolet light, and then he will see if there is a defect or a crack in the connection. So if there is a crack in the connection, then we remove that connection and we don't use it. Otherwise, we might get a twist off while doing casing drilling. And actually, twist twist off is uh, it's very common. So the recommendation is always to inspect the casing, make sure that the connection the connection is able to handle the torque and to handle the loads that we are going to have during casing drilling. Good one, uh, Tommy. So next. Question, if we get a stock with casing while drilling, how we can handle if we can retrieve it or release the casing? It's another uh, good question. Sometimes uh, when casing get a stock, what we can only do is over pull to the maximum of the connection capacity and the casing capacity. And uh, in these cases, it will depend on so sometimes CRT is connected to the top drive and the top drive will have, um, in this case, the connection of from the top drive to the CRT might be a weak connection. So the torque, the maximum torque that we can apply, it will be limited by this connection. So what we can do if we get a stock, so we can apply maximum torque or maximum over pull, maximum pulling capacity up. And this way we can um, try to release the stock pipe. If we get a stock in carbonate, sometimes we uh, pump uh, acid pills. Acid pills might release the stock pipe. And then if we, get, if we cannot release, then we will be uh, plugging and abandoning the well. So these are kind of the red recovery in case of a stockpipe event. Then is carbon steel? Yes, the casing is uh, carbon steel most of the most of the time. Sometimes for avoiding corrosion, we use chrome, 13, 13 chrome in the casing. And, and, and this will be just to handle CO2 or H2S, just to avoid the uh, failures of, uh, of the casing. Any other uh, question, guys? Definitely, sir. Yes. Uh, I got a question, if you don't mind. Yes, Mohammed, go ahead. OK, thank you. If we drill the first stage uh, of the reservoir by the CWD, and after we want to drill the, another stage of the reservoir, how we could do that? Because uh, if I understand from the stage, uh, you say that uh, the drill bit is set in the end of the casing. Yes. So after after we uh, pumping the uh, semantic slurry in the end, uh, mm -hmm. how we put uh, drilling after that? Because uh, I understand that the drill is setting at the end after we uh, pumping the cement, and we I guess uh, we are losing the bed. Correct. After so you are losing this bit, but you can perform two casing uh, drilling sections. So for instance. Okay. But is that is that impossible to uh, perforating the de the bit or uh... no no it it can be drilled out so you can pass through the bit you can drill out this bit for instance this is a eight and a half section and it was casing drill with seven inch casing 
but then I can easily do another casing drilling section with a four and a half. So it, it should be a small diameter take casing to be able to drill out and to pass through the previous casing. So if I have a reservoir that has different pressure regimes, different pore pressure, or different uh, lithologies, I need to uh, divide the section, then I can do this. I can uh, drill with casing drill in this section. And then with a small size diameter, I can perform casing drilling in the next section. Uh, that answer your question? Thank you so much. And I have another question, if you don't mind. Yes, go ahead. So uh, that method, is that common in the whole world? Or uh, as you know, it's uh, very easy for that way of uh, CWD. Understand for you that it's very easy, uh, CWD, for uh, increasing the time, and it's easy to, and it is easy way for use it. Uh, and instead for the old way that we're using uh, first drilling and after that casing. But uh, the main question is: Is that um, that method is common in the whole world? It's a uh, let's say it's very easy to implement. Yes, and. Uh, the thing, it has a, a quite a lot of advantages, but it can be used only in like soft to medium formation. So if you have a hard formation, then you cannot perform casing drilling. If you have extended reach well, then in those cases, you cannot do casing drilling. So it has a, a lot of advantages, but at the same time, there are disadvantages that we can, in some cases, we cannot use casing drilling. So it's a very good technology. Is still, uh, let's say, under uh, implementation in some places, because uh, most of the time your drill bits are engineered to have the highest uh, rate of penetration or ROP. So, and the casing bit needs to be a little bit lighter to be able to drill it later. So that's why durability compare a casing bit with a conventional drill bit the durability of a conventional drill bit is quite higher. Therefore, those bits are more aggressive and uh, consequently the ROP is higher compared to a casing bit. So in soft to medium formation, yes, we can perform casing drilling in hard formation, no. So it's gonna be uh, difficult for the casing bit to be able to drill. As, as I mentioned, the casing bit needs to be a little bit lighter to be able to drill out through it. So casing drilling will be implemented most probably in more wells in level three. So level three is the one that uh, we are using a, a normal, a conventional BHA. So this is a conventional BHA that then, so you, it's, you are drilling with a BHA below the casing and the casing is above and you are creating the hole and even uh, doing trajectory work with this uh, BHA and then you retrieve the BHA. So casing level, uh, casing drilling level three, it's being implemented now in uh, Abu Dhabi quite a lot. In Saudi, we have some runs, not much, but we have. So uh, the future should be the implementation of more uh, level three to be able to do easier runs and, and faster ROP. Thank you, sir. But I have uh, recently thought about another question. If you don't yes. mind, it's a final question. Uh, I have thought if uh, how we could use the longing tools through the CW, CWD. The long well, tools. longing tools, you can use LWD in this case. So you can have, for instance, your RSS, your rotary steerable system. And then above, you can have a, a triple combo log tool. And then you you might be logging gamma ray resistivity or uh, seven, uh, bond log. seven bond log, but uh, se seven bond log. Then you need to run it later after you cement the casing. So after you get to section TD and then you cement. So then at that moment you can run the cement bond log inside the casing when the casing is already cemented. So and there is a resistivity box. So we can how you can how do you can reuse it? through that uh, new method? Resistivity log is when you uh, run in level three. So in these cases, you have a VHA uh -huh, yeah. and then you can place a LWD tool here and then you can record uh, a resistivity. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate all you answered for me. No, very good question, uh, Mohamed.
thank you. So I have one more question. What's the maximum depth that can be reached by this technique at your experience in the area? So mostly we drill here in KSA, it's around um, 5,000, in average 5,000. We have drilled 6,000 feet uh, maximum. So we basically drill through Shuaiba, Wave, and Biyat, those formations that are medium, uh, medium hard. So it's, it's not so hard formation. So it's medium uh, hardness. And, and I will say in, in uh, Saudi Arabia, maximum is around 7,000 feet uh, depth that we have uh, drilled with casing drilling. Okay. So I don't know if uh, there is any other question. Yes, mister. Yes. Uh, thank you. Welcome. Uh, please, uh, are, are there standard codes for the casing types such as ISO, ISDM, or API? There is API standards for uh, inspection uh, for casing. Uh, a good reference is uh, an uh, IADC, the International Association of Drilling Contractors, has a drilling manual. So in there, they specify some tools and, uh, but for the type of casing, this is where drilling engineers need to do the design. So in this case, you need to design that casing for the torsional loads that it will be suffering and compression and tension loads. So that needs to be designed. There is uh, some, uh, companies that have different casing design approaches. So probably there is no a specific uh, design per se for casing drilling, but the AADC is a very good reference to, to let's say, to design casing drilling. Thank you. All right, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Uh, any other question or I think, yes, we are more than one hour now. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Varela. I think uh, Hashim or Hisham has a question. Yes. Uh, can you unmute yourself? Um, okay. Uh, okay, so we don't have any questions uh, anymore. Thank you, Mr. Verla, for this informative session and for exploring such an interesting technology with us and educating on such an important topic. Um, thank you again for accepting the invitation and thank you all for attention. No, thank you all for your attendance and uh, thank you, Hussein, for inviting me. So I'm glad to share knowledge with the, the new generation and, and please so look at the links, enter the career website and uh, I'll wish you all of you the best in your career and in your future. Thanks. All Goodbye. right. Bye-bye, guys. That's all.